Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. Got an interesting project going on this morning. We've got some knives here that got bent in the autoclave. Uh, they're heating it up, heating them up to harden them, and had them sitting on a piece of stock like this. And apparently, these blades were so thin that just gravity pulled them down and had them bend like this. So I'm gonna try to show y'all how to straighten these. So some of them are not as severe. That one there is not too bad, just the tip, mostly. And I think this one here is pretty straight. But uh, as you can tell, they're kind of nasty looking and I've already annealed them or normalized the metal so that, that we can work with them. And I was gonna show you how to fix a problem like this. This is something that happens. I mean, some things you can't help. So, I'm going to walk you through the steps on some of the things you need to know. The material, I'm not sure what it is. This is some form of stainless, if I'm not mistaken. I'll look it up and post it and let you know what it is. And then we've got two other things to do as well. These here are a set of parallels, and they did the exact same thing. If you can tell, they got a pretty good, pretty good whoop in them. If I had a flat side, you could see it. You can see all that daylight through there. But uh, these right here are a different type of tool steel. This is A2. So very, very hard. If I'm not mistaken, A2 has 1% carbon, so pretty hard stuff. So I did the same thing to them, as you can tell, because these were ground and everything, so it had a really good finish on them. But anyways, we're going to give it the old college try and see if we can't straighten them. thing I was going to point out is you're going to need a really good piece of steel to do this. Now if you've got a good quality anvil that's one thing but you need something really really flat and it's got to have a really good surface finish on it because you don't want to put any dings or marks into your blade that's already been you know almost to the finishing process. So just one little tip on that. Plus when I do stuff like this I don't use a steel hammer I'll use a brass hammer so to keep it from marring the finish up. So just a few tips on that.
I know some of y'all out there are wondering why can't you forge a piece of steel that's been hardened. This is why. This right here is an old uh, friend of mine wanted to make kind of a cookery blade one time. It don't look nothing like one, but it it's not too far. It's got the basic curve shape in it and everything. But anyways, not the point. This right here is a leaf spring out of a trailer, if I'm not mistaken. Now, we forged this and we hardened it. All hardened it. And I don't think we left put a temper in it. So it was stupid hard. And he came back a few weeks later and wanted to forge it again. And I didn't think about it. I forgot that we had hardened it and we didn't anneal it. So he went to forging on it. And I'm going to show you a close-up shot, but you can see that crack right there. It's huge. And there's one up in here. And they're everywhere. This is what happens when you try to forge something that's already been hardened. So always, always, doesn't matter what it is, anneal it first. Now, some metals, you can get away with it. If it doesn't have a lot of carbon in it, that's, that's what causes all this cracking, is the carbon. If it's got low carbon content, you're okay. But if it's high carbon or medium carbon, then you need to you need to anneal it. It's it's best to anneal anything before you start forging on it. But I'm going to show you a close up picture up on this so you can take a look at it. But you can see there's a crack right here. There's a bunch up in here, up in there, and I'm pretty sure there was some down here, but you can't see them from all the rust. But yes, this is stuff you need to consider because you may spend a long time on a project and it do this to you so always always a needle okay you're probably wondering how do you test it if something's high carbon or not the easiest test and what most people go to is the grinding test watch the sparks now it takes a trained eye to establish what if it's high carbon or not whether it, any carbon but as, as you practice and get better at it, you can, you can get a pretty good assumption of what it's going to be. So I'm going to run a few different types of materials and I'll let you see for yourself. I'm going to show you what they look like. Got no cracks. Or any bad spots. That's, that's all the brass right there from the hammer hitting it. And we got them relatively straight. Still got a little bit of light, but that, I believe, I believe we fixed that the best we can. Yeah, a little light down there at the tail. But yeah, not too bad. Same thing with the blade. Uh, 
as straight as I can get it. But yeah, not bad. Two things that weren't that were that were weren't are now fixed. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Subscribe to me if you like. Like this video. And once again, from Classic Work, y'all take care. I'll see you next time.